Right now, though, let's go across uh, to the other side uh, of the pond because, of course, uh, it's hotting up over there in terms of the presidential election. Uh, Kamala Harris is supposedly going to name um, her running mate and the belief is it's going to be Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Let's talk to Charles Feldman, co-host of KNX In-Depth at KNX News Radio in Los Angeles. Charles, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mike. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, I think we've got a leaked video to show you, uh, which is uh, Philadelphia Mayor Cheryl Parker. Have a look at this. I'm Mayor Cheryl Parker, here with leaders from across our region. Kamala Harris is on the road to victory. And the road goes through Pennsylvania. We're getting behind Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris for president. And Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro for vice president. Oops. Um, I don't think they meant to do that, did they? No, in fact, her <laughs> staff, that was released actually uh, yesterday. Right. And her staff claims that they made a number of variations yes. of that commercial in preparation for whomever it is right. that Harris decides to name. But if you think about it, Mike, right, if it turns out that it's not Josh Shapiro, this is going to backfire because in that commercial that you were showing, that you're showing now, one of the things the mayor of Philadelphia says is she can think of nobody better, nobody else right. to be a ticket than Josh Shapiro. So if it turns out not to be Josh Shapiro, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Isn't that it? really is a bit of a problem because it's also going to be a massive problem in Pennsylvania, which is the, the state that they need to win, isn't it? Which is presumably yes. why she would probably choose Josh Shapiro anyway. Yeah, and, and that has been the speculation here for the past week or so, that since she's kicking off, this is really her first week of true campaigning since she effectively got the nomination of the Democratic Party. So the thinking is that if she's starting off in the state of Pennsylvania, and you know she's going to have the governor of the state standing somewhere in the stage with her, it would be a little bit embarrassing if it turns out she says, I thank the governor of the state of Pennsylvania. And then she goes, but my pick is, right. and she turns to the next guy. So that is what the conventional wisdom is, Mike. But I caution, as I always do, that conventional wisdom is often wrong. It is indeed. The thing that I find most puzzling about all of this, right, is that Kamala Harris was at some point or other, up until, what, two weeks ago, um, a bit of a laughing stock. You know, nobody really knew much about her. She didn't really have much of a profile as a vice president. I mean, funnily enough, I didn't really even know how she talked or how she sounded because she said so little. Um, and how has she suddenly gone from being, you know, oh, no, we can't hand the presidency to her because she would absolutely screw it up, to being, you know, the pick of the Democratic Party and, you know, the doyen and the darling of the left. Well, call it a quirk of the American political system, if you will. Uh, you're quite right that until recently, most Americans really didn't know that much about her, but that is kind of the way the vice presidency mm. works in the states, right? I mean, there's nothing in our constitution that really gives the vice president any real power to do anything, except when there's a tie in Congress, they get to cast a deciding vote. Other than that, you know, through the, the decades, through actually the centuries, vice presidents have done sometimes very little and sometimes a little bit more at the pleasure of the, the uh, president. She did have a task that Joe Biden gave her mm. early on, which was to be, some people have referred to it as uh, to be the czar of the immigration right. issue. Uh, if that is the case, and the White House now is backtracking on that, characterization if however though that that was the case one can argue that perhaps she didn't do a very good job of it mm. no i don't think it'd be one of the things you'd hold up on your cv as you know oh when i was in charge of keeping the borders safe when four million illegal immigrants seem to have crossed over it uh, in recent times but um but she's a very left-wing candidate as well i was reading um a piece by andrew sullivan this weekend about how you know she really is one of the most left-wing individuals in the entire United States of America. So it's a very big shift for the Democrats to go from somebody like Joe Biden, who, you know, is kind of more in the centre. Well, that's right. I mean, she does come from the more, not the extreme progressive wing of the Democratic Party, but you're quite right, uh, more from the left wing of it. I mean, she is, after all, a product of the state that I'm talking to you from right now, which yeah. is California. Uh, she came up through the ranks first as the district attorney of the city of San Francisco, then the attorney general 
of the state of California and then ultimately the senator, one of the senators from the state of California. So by definition, one has to be, if you're a politician, pretty much to the left in order to get votes in California. The key now, Mike, is whether she can drift over the, the next few weeks. She doesn't have a lot of time for mm. this drift. She has to drift more to the center of the Democratic Party, where Joe Biden, you know, in effect, has always been, yeah. in order to get enough votes to win. She doesn't have to win all of the country. She just has to win a handful of states, mm. which are the critical ones. No, indeed. And, I mean, there are some Democrats that I've spoken to as well who are not that happy about this kind of, you know, shoo-in, this, this, this done deal, the idea that somehow she's been anointed as the candidate and that's, that's the only choice that anybody's ever going to have, you know, because they're not sure that she's going to be able to beat Donald Trump. Well, that's right. I mean, there, there is a faction still in the Democratic Party that wanted to have what we call an open convention. It was the way that for a long time, uh, presidential uh, contenders were selected in the United States. They were picked basically behind closed doors, the old, you know, notion of the smoke filled, you know, rooms. And then we moved to a primary system, which was viewed as being more democratic, mm. small. Uh, and there were some who thought that when Joe Biden decided that he was not, in fact, going to run for a second term, that it would have been more democratic for the Democrats to have an open party, an uh, open convention in August, and right. let them slug it out and see who ended up with the most support among the delegates. That didn't happen. There was a real uh, urgency felt by many of the delegates to solidify behind uh, Kamala Harris very quickly, and that is, in fact, what ended up happening. Mm. So, I mean, and what are the latest polls showing? Because at one point or other, she seemed to be raising an awful lot of money in the first few days of her, of her new campaign. Um, but it's sort of settled down a bit now, hasn't it? Well, she did raise a lot of money. You're quite right. Actually, an historic amount of money is somewhere in the first 48 hours. She raised north of 200 million million dollars, which is a phenomenal amount mm. of money, Actually, more money than Joe Biden has raised as president of the United States. And she also succeeded in getting uh, several thousands of volunteers to enlist on behalf of her campaign in the country. But mm. as to your question about the polls, uh, the polls have now sort of tightened up, uh, up until the point when she became the candidate for the party. Yeah, uh, you know, jo uh, uh, Donald Trump was uh, clearly on an upswing, especially in those critical uh, battleground states yeah. that I referred uh, to earlier. Now the latest polling is showing that in some cases, she's about one, maybe even two percentage points uh, more than Donald Trump is, which means that she has now done better than Joe Biden was doing. But, and this is the big but here, uh, it is very early on, uh, polls this far out are notoriously uh, not very predictive. And also when you're dealing with one or two percentage point differential, you're well within the statistical margin yes. of error polls. So a one or two percent point uh, lead for either candidate, whether it's Trump or Harris, is pretty much meaningless. What will be interesting, Mike, to see is in the course of the next week or two, especially once she does select her running mate, what happens to the polls then? What happens to the polls in the critical states? If we then see that she is beating Donald Trump consistently by four, five, six, seven percentage points, then that is going to be a very critical determination of what is likely to happen in November. And the reverse is also true mm. if it turns out that Donald Trump starts leading her by five, six, seven percentage points. Right. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Uh